And welcome to this weekend edition of the Native News Update on this Friday, October 7th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Demain. Many of the stories found here can also be found at our websites at IndianCountryNews.com and IndianCountryTV.com. And here are some of the news stories for the day. In February of this year, federal agents raided a Yakima tobacco grower and cigarette manufacturer called King Mountain Tobacco near White Swan, Washington. Ironically, the Yakima Nation itself had filed a lawsuit the day before against the state of Washington, claiming that a lawsuit filed against big tobacco companies in 1998 and its settlement, called the Master Settlement Agreement, or MSA, was not a tax, was not ratified by Congress, and as a settlement between those tobacco companies and states did not apply to those cigarette manufacturers who were neither sued nor at the table when the settlement was made. The Yakima Nation said it filed a lawsuit based on the provision of the Walla Walla Treaty of 1855 with the Yakima Nation and signed with the United States and alleged violations of the treaty based on Washington State's insistence that King Mountain Tobacco pay into escrow $5.48 for each carton of cigarettes it manufactured into this escrow fund. King Mountain, King Mountain Tobacco, a privately owned company organized and incorporated under Yakima Nation business laws, complied with those demands until the Yaka, Yakima Nation itself could study the case. In addition, the Yakima Nation recently filed lawsuits against several non-native law enforcement officers from non-native municipalities from Mississippi that participated in the raid on the Yakima Reservation this uh, February. Today we start a series hoping to bring to you several weeks of interviews and presentations starting with a short interview with one of the owners of King Mountain Tobacco, Dalbert Wheeler, called Obama Honor the Yakima Treaty of 1855. Right. Now, I look at it and May 24th, 2010, I went to the Yakima Nation. I got a ruling from the Yakima Nation that yes, our treaty was honored and that we were untaxable because one, this 1.4 million acres was for our exclusive right use and benefit. Number two, that we grow tobacco on our own trust property. Three, that we manufactured our products on our own trust land. And these federal laws are in place and established. Number four, to enforce these rights, that we had a right to meet with the President of the United States. So we put a packet together and shipped it to the Justice Department, the Secretary of Interior, um, to the Bureau of Indian Affairs, and also to one of the attorneys of President Obama's. And since then, President Obama's refused to meet with us. He's refused to honor our treaty. He says that we have to meet with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Our treaty doesn't say that. Our treaty states that we will meet with the Great White Father directly and is all he has to do is read it it's pretty simple it's straightforward the federal law says anything grown on your trust property is a hundred percent tax exempt anything manufactured or handicrafted on your own trust property is a hundred percent tax exempt these are already established laws but we're kind of like going over them and over them again. It's kind of like Cree versus Waterbury when you go to Smiskin versus U.S. It, it was just reconfirming the same thing. And how many times are we going to be drugged through court over the same issue that's already been won? And the MSA is not a tax. It's not been ratified by Congress. The Master Settlement Agreement is an agreement with the states. Back in 1978, 98, the big tobacco companies had a lot of issues with people claiming lung cancer, 
um, diseases from smoking. And so they started filing suits on Philip Morris and RJR. At that t time, when they start filing the suits, they started suing them for millions of dollars. So they came up with what was called a master settlement agreement. The manufacturers agreed to pay so much a carton. Today it's $5.48 a carton for everything sold in each state. So they pay that to the state and it goes to the general fund of the state. Now then you have the non-participating members. Now they pay the same amount, but it's paid into an escrow account owned by the company. Now if the company doesn't get the lawsuit filed against them, then that money comes back to them in 25 years, which it only benefits the state to fight for the bigger corporations and for Philip Morris and RJR and Browns and Williamson to protect their market share because theirs is paid into the direct state budget. And you're, and you're caught up in, in an agreement, not a tax, in an agreement between big tobacco companies and 46 states. That's correct. And in order to get approved on any state, you have to be approved by the AG of each state, where it's become a real complication because when we write in an application and we send it to the state, we're not approved. 75% of the states have denied us. They've asked us to waive our sovereign immunity, to waive our right as a Native American, as a Yakima Indian, and that they want us to waive all these things that they don't ask the other companies to waive. The, the question is, is the relationship, and we can come back to the original one, was that Chief Kamaikan in the treaty negotiation says, I don't want to, I didn't ask for this role. Uh, my people want me to speak for them. The great white father has called me the head chief. And so I'm here. Not because he necessarily wanted to be there, but a convergence of things put him there. You have a son named Kamaikan. There's a, a relationship there, but there's something more than perhaps just DNA. Well, for one, we come from that lineage. And two, it's not that we're being chosen or taken on a chosen position. It's that we're being forced into this position too. We're being forced to fight for the same things and I have to speak for all my children and my grandchildren and my wife and all my nieces and nephews and all my family because if I don't, then who's going to speak for them on these same issues? And maybe they will not be able to practice their way or the things that they believe. So I have to go forth on it, no matter what. And now I'm even forced harder because the federal government has put me in that position where I can't say, oh, I give or I'm going to back out. I got to fight because it's all real. Everything's here. And I'm embarrassed sometimes that our tribe hasn't stood up and made these stands and these fights a long time ago. And a lot of people have not really studied and read the treaty and the minutes to the treaty to understand it to what it's saying and what protection it does give to our people and the legacy that it does leave. Because a lot of people and especially back in 1855, had to really see a change of life that was forced upon them. The freedom to gather, the freedom to go to their natural and accustomed places, the freedom to be who they were. They were confined in a smaller space to practice their life. And then that was even dictated on. 
there was still forts built here. And my parents, they were forced to go to Fort Simcoe. And the stories they told me when the things happened, that they seen three of their grandfathers hung in front of them. Because Sunday wasn't a day that we used to practice as a Sabbath. It was, the Sabbath was dictated by where the star set with the moon. And we would have two to three in a month. And it was a Sabbath day, and they started singing. So they took these three elder men that started practicing our way and hung them in front of all the children and brought my, my parents out there and made them witness it. Then they strapped them all up on a pole and they whipped them to their bones. And these are the things that has lost our language. It's lost our culture. It's twisted it a little bit. And so, in that, I believe that I still have to stand up because there's a chance that maybe I may not see light after this is all over. I don't know that. Will your grandchildren have an opportunity to be business people, Yakima business people? I hope my grandchildren do, and I hope that other children do. I hope other children of the Yakima Nation are able to accomplish and have a dream in their life that, and a goal that they could set and that's obtainable by them. Because in my life, to do the things I did and to be who I was, it took everything in my life to do that. And I, I can't express it how hard it was. And it's still hard today. And I always remember what my father told me. I told him, I want to be a councilman. And we were sitting at the breakfast table and he told me, well, I wouldn't vote for you. And I said, why? He said, because you've never done nothing in your life. And then later on in life, when I succeeded at the things I did, my father told me, do you want to be a councilman? He said, because I will vote for you. I told him, are you crazy? What I know now, I don't want to be. <laughs> In other news, the Chickasaw Trails Association and the Hernando Bicycle Club are co-sponsoring an October 29th ride through 41 miles of trails once used by Indian tribes. The Red Pride bike ride will start at the Hernando Farmer's Market on the historic downtown Courthouse Square. The route goes through valleys, woodlands, and along plateaus before returning to the square. Brian Hicks, chairman of the Chickasaw Trails Association, director of the De Soto Museum in Hernando, says proceeds from the ride will benefit the establishment of the Chickasaw Trail system in DeSoto County. And also coming up here uh, very soon is the Oneida Nation Organic uh, Farm. It's hosting their 18th annual Husky and Bee and Community Harvest. The event will be kicked off on Saturday, October 8th at 9 a.m. at the farm located at 139 Riverdale Drive on the Oneida Reservation. The Husky and Bee will, Bee will close at 5 p.m. and uh, it's going to run through until October 15th. Six acres of heirloom white corn will be hand harvested by the community and the corn will then be braided and hung to dry for next year's use in soups, breads, and other foods. And that's going to be the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. Miigwech for joining with us.